when last we left our brave adventurers, they had learned some exciting information from the matron. They had met, well, spied on one of the other dukes, and they had heard from far off a fourth one eating something. They spoke to the matron, got a little bit of an upgrade, and then one of their party members suddenly dropped to the floor. So to address that, before we continue forward, I would like to turn back the clock 24 hours. Clovis, you are sleeping soundly, and you find yourself in a city very similar to Tannis. Though there are no lights on in the streets, everything is dark, kind of covered in a sort of gray malaise. Do I see anyone around? No. And you do not hear the typical sounds of the city. Gotcha, gotcha. And it looks like Tannis, but this doesn't seem to be a place that I've been before. Um, it looks like somebody took the memory of Tannis from your brain and tried to recreate it. Okay, I see. Um, I think... Sort of that uncanny valley. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I think Clovis, uh, takes a second, looks around, you know, typical get your bearings response. Um, I think, oddly, he's more at ease here than he has been in the environment that he's been in the entire time he's been in the domain. Uh, so despite the like light eeriness to this sort of like liminal space, uh, he's a bit more relaxed and kind of just starts wandering down the, the cobblestone streets uh, with a book in hand looking okay. for anyone. Um, sort of through this misty malaise of the city, um, you see a cloaked figure walking with their back to you a little ways ahead of you. They're moving a little slower than your typical walking pace, and they seem to be moving away from you. Hmm. Uh, I think kind of excited to be back in a city, even though part of him probably realizes that this is wrong and he should not be here. Uh, Clovis will pick up his step a little bit and go, Oh, hello! Um, as you say that, you see the figure start, turn, and you can't quite see a face. You see sort of the suggestion of a chin and the lower half of a face. Uh, it looks very elvish, but you can't determine anything other than that. And mm -hmm. then the figure bolts. Um, the face, did it look like... It, was it just obscured by like the the cloak that it had on, or did it look like mm. wrong? Okay, it looked. Uh, it was just obscured. Yeah. Then I think Clovis will just call out, "Sorry for startling you. I'm. There's no one else around. I'm. I'm a bit confused. I was just. I wanted to know if you knew where we were." Um, as you say that, the mist kind of recedes, and you see other people walking. Um sort of that same slow gait kind of milling around you. And as you speak, they all stop and turn towards you. And you see from this sort of group of figures, one walks out where the other robes were gray. This one is solid black. And it takes a few steps towards you. And it gets pretty close. And if you if you try to back up, you see that you are now kind of enclosed by people. Hmm. And as it looks up to you, you do see the outline of the face again. And it reaches up and pulls back its hood. And you see a face, like the features of a face, a nose and a mouth. But other than that, the face is completely featureless, as if it's carved out of wood. And then okay. you hear this clicking sound almost like wood as the head turns to the side and then it lurches forward and it grabs onto your face and the last thing you hear is a voice you have not heard before say I need to borrow you 
and then you wake up on the ground outside of the tavern in the middle of the city. Hmm, okay. With Mazora and Zir looking at you in terror. And now we're back to present time. Oh. Oh. That was a weird dream. How did I... Did we... I've not begun sleepwalking, have I? No, just giving our enemy everything they need. That's, I'm sorry. It's not fair to him to say that. Well, uh, well, uh, what do you mean, Mizora? Um, You were a skin for something for a while that now knows more about us than we needed it to. So that... Did you talk to somebody? Not exactly. I I had fallen asleep, um, and then I, I woke up, and I was in a city. It was kind of like tennis, but not quite. It was off. Um, and I saw a figure, and I was confused, because, you know, that's kind of how we ended up here in the first place. I thought maybe we'd ended up somewhere else, so I, I went to approach and try and find out where I was, and it was some sort of weird cloaked thing. It, it it was almost like a person, but it looked like it was made of wood. I didn't get a very good look because as soon as it revealed itself, it sort of jumped at me and it said something, but I... Sorry, I'm... I'm having a bit of trouble remembering. It was... Where were you when you fell asleep? We were... In the treehouse. Were we here? In the tree... Yes, that's right. Yes. Yes. So probably happened the same time you and uh, Bosrek were visited? Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah. Um. I, maybe. I don't think so, though. It would have been after we went to sleep. And she left. How... How long... A day. Was I... A day? Mm hmm We woke up. We had breakfast. Uh, you and I cooked breakfast together, actually, so that's strange. Um, and then... We headed back here to return Dimitri. Um, we we yeah, gave... Sweet. Oh, we bartered one of the skulls. Well, you bartered one of the skulls. Um, so we could get some upgrades in our gear. And so, then... Yes, we... After that, um, Mez and I went and uh, did some recon. There was a there was a meeting that happened between oh the doctor guy was it and Gregor? the matron. Mm -hmm. hmm. it's, so you didn't miss a whole lot, um, but the person who was, for lack of a better word, possessing you, uh, did learn a decent amount. And now we know they're capable of that, so. Okay. We should tell the others. Yes. Well, um, and also Bosworth, catch you up on uh, anything else. They they are inside. Yeah, they didn't want to I come because they're yes, not really. I would like stealthy. to get inside very much right now. Um, and uh, Clovis is going to start of like haphazardly. Uh, 
pick himself up. Uh, he still seems a little like sort of shaky and, and out of it. Uh, he's gonna like fumble his way to the door and, and try and enter the tavern. Hey, hey. <clears throat> You're mm -hmm. safe. And it wasn't your fault. Uh, yes. Right. Thank you. Uh, um, push his way indoors. Yeah. So, uh, Quedon and Osric, you see Somnus sort of tumble into the room. Som, sorry. Clovis, you mean Clovis. <laughs> I did that last week too. You did. I'm sorry. <laughs> is, is everything okay? Had a good bit. Uh, I don't think Clo Clovis says anything right away. Uh, I think he just like makes for the closest chair and just sort of falls into it. Team meeting. We're having a team meeting. What's Much to discuss. <laughs> Clearly, what's uh, uh, speak say that? Uh, sorry, short, not short version. Um, Clovis was being was being ridden by another entity for the better part of a day. Anything As you he say saw. That. Oh, go ahead. As you say that, Lady Thane kind of realizes sort of thing and saying, okay, everyone come up. And she starts to like gather people away from you to sort of give you that sort of room of the tavern. Hmm. Anything he saw and heard for the last day, they know and he doesn't. Um, Lady Thane. A moment. No. Do you think anything that was talked about in here would have been safe because of the protection if do you have do works. you have an idea of who would have done that i mean we have an idea if something was controlling him when he came in it, the spell wouldn't have protected him it was non-detection which protects from scrying but if something has access to his psyche his personality then anything possible if it was something I could have prevented with my magic it would have shunted out the entity right away who do you think it would have been there are several entities here that are capable of that sort of power it's not like just the four in the corners more than likely it was Lisa Betts but there are darker forces here than the Dukes. Yeah. Gotta get used to not being the darkest force in a room. Um, Lady Thane kind of laughs at you saying that and says, My dear Queen, in this realm, honestly, you are a I basically do exactly that. I give a half smile and a nod and I don't say much else. I mean, what? Well, I feel like me and Boz were, well, we were absent for at least the last few conversations that the three of you had. What we should come up with some kind of a list of, of what information they may have gathered. What, what do we remember that that you told us, or that we told you. Just to, you know, keep in mind. Well, they would have catch, overheard uh, our, catch, yeah. our conversation with the matron. Yes. We spoke to the matron. Yeah, so yes. we saw Gregor heading over to, to speak with her, and we thought that was kind of weird. And so we followed, well, some of us, like I said, Boz and uh, Quidden stayed behind due to stealth reasons. 
Um, and uh, so we listened in on a little bit of Bragger's conversation, and then we went and had some of our own conversation as well. And you came with us. And she didn't notice anything. If she did, she didn't say anything. At least not that I remember. Mez, do you, did she act off at all? She didn't seem to act off. She told us what we asked and then gave us um, the other thing we asked for. That was it. So whatever it is, it's good enough to slip her sight. Uh, how, I mean, your, I suppose we have no way of ever knowing this, but you're you now. Why, why did they let you go? Is that? Dreadmaster. Can I roll an insight check? Because I think Clovis wants to determine whether or not he's in a dream. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll an insight check. Wonderful. Um, and I'm going to have the rest, the other four of you, roll a persuasion check. Hmm. Because you're trying to convince Clovis that he is awake. That is a 13. Okay. At 20. <laughs> Or 24. I can't hear you, uh, Missouri. It's fine. It was an 8. Anything I tell him is probably not going to work. Well, at this point, unless one of you rolls an at 1, the average is going to take is going to default to that 20. I got oh, yeah. 20, 23. All right. Um, looking around, um, Clovis, you sort of, like, take things in, and um, you sort of flex your hand and you can feel sort of that, like, reptilian skin kind of flutter on and off of it. And you've determined that this is about as real as things are getting. Okay. Um... Sorry. I'm being... This is... I, it was it really was instantaneous for me and I'm sort of I think grappling with the fact that apparently an entire day just doesn't exist for me anymore um of course take as uh, long as you need but I just I'm sort of grappling with I mean Clovis or not Clovis uh, knew everything that you knew presumably I mean we can always we can always put some kind of a test in if we you know talk about trigger phrases or or, or you know if we agree on on some kind of a, a a phrase that only us would know but there's there's no knowing that they wouldn't also just know it mm. I, what i i don't know what I, the... yeah you acted very much yourself i will remind well... uh, the group just because it's been a week out of game but only a few moments in game clovis seemed to when he was possessed his memory seemed to stop before Zir died because he was still calling Zir Scruffy Child I did not make that connection which was okay uh, approximately two days ago okay So, a day, nothing happened, that's fine. Um, um, I'm a little fuzzy on how the, the one, the, the day before that ended. We... We had a late night visitor. And she stabbed me with her mind. We slept in the tower room after, after 
mansion. So essentially, these beings can get to us in our sleep. Well, haven't we? Haven't some of y'all been having nightmares? Yes. And you also had a nightmare. We 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 talked about that. talked about sharing nightmares, but <laughs> okay. I mean, if, if there's if there's some kind of a, a wall as to as to what they know, we, we, we could always uh, try to agree on, on you know, are you really you phrases, but I don't know how far that would go. I I don't know, I suppose. <laughs> well, that's the paranoia that this place sets in. The fact that we really don't know. I mean, maybe I... this is... Maybe this is defeatist. I don't know, but... Um... I kind of feel like we should just assume that nothing's a secret going forward. It's defeatist. It's also not inaccurate. Yeah. <sighs> I, have... I mean, I, I don't disagree with your idea. Having some kind of check might be nice, but once again, they might be able to pass that check or... Yes. They might learn that that's what we're doing, or they might have a whole other way of spying on us. I mean, people have known our names, have known our histories. Yes, I, we haven't been very secretive, all things considered. Uh, but it seems to be... Inside. And then... We played hide-and-seek with the, with the sisters. And yes. then, mm -hmm. and then we were in the basement, in the room with, um, the notes. Mm -hmm. And then we left, and we. There was one other thing, which I don't know if that's, everyone that's saw it, but Zia and I definitely saw it. Was. The, what looked like a little girl that said she wanted to wear a sleigh. Well, wears his ear like a coat. Oh, she did say that, huh? I, I think Probably my brain kind of, as well. when did this my brain kind of blocked that out. I don't think do you, you were not, there for it. Clovis, do you not remember the night after? Do you not remember I mean, we talked about me, about you, uh, about I, I don't, Where does the line? I, re where... I remember remembering, but when I everything's a little fuzzy around the edges, and yes, but I was. So I don't. I don't mean I to was, cry. But I was me then. Surely. Yes. I mean, I must surely. have been because I remember falling asleep. Unless that. The no, last. I didn't. The last thing you remember, Clovis, with your 13 insight, and even though things are fuzzy and, like, you're seeing things sort of out of order in your memory, mm -hmm. you remember Katya going underground. Mm -hmm. You remember Zir coming in unconscious with no visible wounds. Mm -hmm. And you remember a conversation with Eden. That in is a, the last thing you remember. In a cleaner headspace, Clovis might be able to communicate that. I, he is deeply in the middle of a panic yeah, attack. I, I just, oh, for sure. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, wanted yeah, to make yeah. sure that you, the player, understood mm -hmm. like where your memory stops. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I don't mean to pry. It's the nightmares. Then it has to be. They Maybe. enter us through our nightmares, and but there's another possibility. The I need thing. To glass water. I'll be right back. Zia, please. 
that thing tried to make you do something, didn't it? Uh, it wanted me to follow her, I think. And you almost did, if I remember. Uh, yeah, because you guys had to pull me away from it. I felt something then. Something hit me. So, maybe it's Lady in Black, maybe it's whatever's under the town. All we know is we have enemies that are further outside of our scope of reference than we thought. I mean, that's what Lady Thane just said, right? There's far more powerful forces at, at stake than just the Dukes. I think they're playing the game just as much as we are. No, we're not playing the game. We don't know what the fucking rules are. We just got here. They might we're the piece, as far as they're concerned, we're the pieces. Our lives are on the wager. Maybe even more than that, considering what death, how death works around here. Hmm. And you can see, there's there's a definite tightening of knuckles, and there and and Boz is very much trying not to just like haul off and go punch a hole in a wall or something. So, again, those of you who have looked at Boz, while he is getting more sort of emotionally invested in what he's saying, those very faint tattoos start to appear a little brighter on his face. Well, I certainly know that... There are many worse fates than death. And I will do my best to protect us all from that boundary. But um I suppose <laughs> Well, saying that there's nothing we can do doesn't really do all that much for group morale now, does it? But I don't know what else we can do. Not much. If any time one of us goes to sleep, you could potentially be skin ridden. Well, does anybody know? Maybe even not even then. Maybe even whenever it takes a liking to you. Well, that's when we know it's happened. For sure. I. But. I don't know. There's a... I need to be... I need to study some of... Uh, there, there are some things in, in, in some very old texts of Zarakis about... about dream states, about... Don't, don't, perhaps I can... Learn can I? You... Sorry, go ahead. Finish your thought. Perhaps there's something in 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 meditation about, you know, protecting the mind, mental wards. I don't know. Could I have Clovis and Whedon roll religion checks for? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly where that, I was hoping that that monologue that I went on led to that outcome. If I ever say no to a religion check, I, the player, have been <laughs> body snatched. Uh, plus five. Okay. Uh, say 12. Not great. Is my, when I roll on d20, are y'all seeing it on, on roll 20? No. Are y'all supposed to be? Yes. I'm, uh, I, I, I saw it on D and D Beyond, but not in not in Roll Twenty. If you have Beyond Twenty, if you have the Beyond Twenty extension. Oh, because the Beyond is yeah. because D and D Beyond is linked in the same campaign. Okay, yeah, it was a seven. Seven. Yeah, I just didn't know if y'all could. Uh, wanted to make sure that my my digital dice were were being as ethical as possible. Yeah. Um, and you got a twelve. You said. Mm -hmm. Lumis? Okay. Um, yeah. You do have some memory that there are gods 
that sort of monitor dreams and sleep. Um, but they're the ones that you ever really associated with much, and in your slightly altered mental state, you can't recall the name. Mm -hmm. But you do know that mm -hmm. there is a god that is related to that. Got it. I don't think Clovis is of a mind to share that information right now. I th I mean, that's the first thing that I jumped to. Some, like, any possible way to ward the mind while I sleep. Um, And I think that, yeah, and having no other, you know, source for his for his magic, he, he would jump to a sort of... Re re because I, it is common I, knowledge. I, I, yeah, I, I want to do that research. If, you know, okay. if there's a library or, yeah. yeah. Because it is common knowledge, um, I will allow the non-clerics to make a religion check with disadvantage. Um, yeah. That's a nat one. I don't okay. even know there's religions. <laughs> I got seven. I am pulling out my physical dice. Oh boy, it, we, we're not getting bad this one, omens. Man. Bad omens. Shane, my other one was a seven. All right. Um, what I got here? I don't know if y'all could hear. Oh, uh, not much better. Noise. Okay, so that will be. Um, Somebody monitors. I, I still want. I, I want to. I want to go and do that research. I think that's the biggest. Like, qu my closest hypothesis is that it must have happened while we were sleeping because we all had nightmares. Like, we all had nightmares, but like, uh, you know, Clovis seemed the most affected, and that seems to be where his memory stops. That's my only hypothesis. I want to try to like. Okay. I don't know. Um, well, Amelia kind of chimes in and says. There's no library here, really, unfortunately. Mm. But well, to talk to the matron, I'm, she's a repository for knowledge. She could, she could help. There is one library here. My backpack. If you wanna, I, I'm not. I, listen, I'm gonna be so honest. I'm not gonna look through a book right now. My head feels like it's about to explode. Yes, um, take as but much time as you can, need. Uh, just. It takes his backpack off and sets it down. <laughs> They're all about gods. Hopefully one of them's the right one. Well, um, Before that, and before we go to bed, because it is late, um, we should probably share what we learned and talked about with the matron. Of course, yes. Sorry, the last thing I can think about right now is sleeping. I mean... We can wait until the morning, but no, no, we don't know that, what the morning's that's, gonna bring. So that's a, that's of course very important information. I just I so, sorry, 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 sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Mez, do you wanna? Please. I'm gonna pick up one of the books and just start reading. But yeah, go ahead. M me? Why? You were there. So are you. I'm going to hold up the book and be like, but I'm reading. So we followed Gregor. He had these weird dudes with him. Who, who is Gregor, by the way? I don't, this is, of, I don't think it's a memory thing. I think I just plum forgot. One of the Dukes. Okay. Okay. He's the one that, well, Elizabeth potentially also experiments on people, but... He's the one that very explicitly experiments on people. Oh, yes. Okay. I remember, um, I do, re yes. I do remember being told about He's that. the source of the lichens. We discovered that. Um, mm -hmm. He's the one that, um, do y'all remember the story about um, one of the previous adventurers whose heart is stuck in like an automaton situation? Yeah. It's, that He's, was that was him that's okay. outside of his place i see um and the matron did confirm my well didn't confirm 
but agrees with my potential assumption that if we can destroy that heart, then he might come back. Um, but okay. yeah, so they talked. We didn't really hear much. Um, Mary listened in and can't remember what she said in a bat form. All she said for the most part was that the matron said that she has, you know, a measure of faith in us and that right yes. now it just seems like he's going to leave us be. He was very much aware of the fact that we were waiting outside and still did not engage and or interact with us at all. We also asked the matron for the capabilities to deal with the sisters should the need arise. Zir has what was provided to us. Oh, and um, we learned that Gregor and the matron have an uneasy alliance. So the dukes aren't necessarily working together. And if anything, that meeting that Seltradot went to isn't a meeting for love and fun. It's a mm. meeting for politics. And that's something I think we can really take advantage of. Right. All of their goals are power-based. And when you're trying to accumulate power, you can only accumulate enough power that everyone else also vying for power allows you to get. So for some of them, taking out one of the other dukes would be a positive, not a negative. Mm. So the matron thinks we could turn them against each other. Gregor being the primary one that is is on our side and that she, well, trusts the most. We may have to be careful then, because if they're all vying for power and trying to usurp one another, if we take action and take one of them down, we it's may... a vacuum. Artif and in that vacuum, we may artificially increase the strength of our future foes. Correct. So, picking our targets may be more important than we had considered. Correct. We also um, have we no way of pitting to... them against each other at the moment, either. Well, Gregor's thankful that we helped Katya. He said that. I think we definitely need to learn as much as we can about about all the Dukes and make as educated of a decision as, as we can. Well, you're not going to like it, but the only place we're probably going to find information is Tradot Manor. Matron. No. She's a scientist and had plenty of books. Chances are she has notes and uh, filings on a great many things for here. That is true. She kept such rigorous notes about her own experiments. I imagine she would have been keen on writing down anything she learned about the others, especially if they're all trying to fight against each other. She would want to document any advantages that she could. Yeah, I mean, if they're spying on us, we need to start spying on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, just keep in mind that uh, we got her daughter killed, destroyed some of her property, and stole some things. I'm so... sorry. What? Um, Katya died. Well, How? she could come back. Uh, the uh, the matron said that as well. We got her through the door and... Uh, and into the tunnel. The wish situation isn't um, exactly what it was cracked up to be. She might come back, but something else we learned when we got back here and saw everyone was... Um, well, as we've seen with me, huh? Um, death isn't necessarily permanent, but sometimes it is. Most of the time people come back, but 
Sometimes they don't, for whatever reason. So mind the Perhaps gap. there's a respawn time. I knew we should have... Into the forest. That's what we, we were considering it. You know, send her into the... At least she'd be away from people. She wouldn't hurt anybody. I think it's still a better alternative to what she... Where she was. Yes. I agree. Threat is not... I want to know more about the thing under the town. I think that's our biggest nice. threat. You know, whatever's down there, it seems more powerful than the rest of them. We should probably bide our time before we uh, go. Oh, I'm not. I'm not that. going down there. Not but, right now. But I want to know whatever there is to know about it. Knowledge is going to come at a cost, and that cost is going to be going into one of these places. Sadly, we have little to barter with. And every time we deal with one of them, we tend to piss them off. The matron was fairly... I mean, was the most passive. She gave us everything she had already. That's the book. And this, and I hold up the little cold vial thing. Uh, we, have a, we have a way to deal with the sisters now. At least more so than we did. This can be applied to a weapon and... and um be the winter's touch or whatever. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Perhaps you guys should get some sleep. No. Not sure that I can. Osric. Uh and you you all may have noticed that Clovis has gotten a little bit more as he's like sort of coming back to himself, a little like fidgety. Uh mm -hmm. Osric, mm. Are you familiar with spear combat? Haven't done it in a while. I can do it. Uh Clovis is a little unhook his mace from his belt, which he still just very clearly, like as he holds it. It just looks awkward in his hand, and you can tell it feels awkward in his hand. Uh, and he sets it to the side um, and reaches back towards his pack and pulls out uh, a javelin. I think this is more my speed, you know, sort of shield. Combat. Yes, except that's a javelin, not a spear. There's a distinct I'm not, difference. I'm not particularly strong, so I think this is maybe good. some good training wheels. Mm, for training purposes, yes, but if you want a proper spear, we're getting you a proper spear. A lot of people will tell you that, oh, you can just take a, pick a javelin up off the battlefield and use it as a spear. They're idiots. A javelin is a throwing weapon, a spear is used in close combat, to, and it is a lot, the haft is a lot stronger. A javelin's haft is a lot softer, so you can, a lot thinner, so you can throw it. So we'll get you a spear, and I will teach you how to use that spear. Speaking of getting things, you said I sold something, right? We, uh, well, your, uh, pilot did. Um, I, 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 I it, it, and evidently it knew. I see. You have um, a health potion now. Woo! Hooray. Do you have nothing else? Oh, so it was sort of, it was like a bartering thing? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yes, you have a health potion, which functions a little differently um, than a standard one. It's You get an extra two health. Hmm. It's 2d4 gotcha. plus four. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, one, forgive me if I'm just forgetting something. What uh, the, the the better armor conversation from last session, is that, are we still just like waiting on that? It's being yeah, made it's like a, you. It was like a three day wait on that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I think... Then... Um, all of both of the clerics were getting better armor, and I think Bosric was as well. Cool. And yeah. as all of that conversation has been happening, I've been tabbing through Clovis's books. Do you want me to re-roll to see if I find anything, or do you just want to tell me? Um, because you're kind of half paying attention, go ahead and just roll a flat investigation check. Hey, that's a just a twelve. 
Okay. You needed to, the DC was 10 because you're actually cool. searching. Um, you happen on a page um, that like you're kind of just like half-heartedly looking through and then you notice the Weaver of Dreams and you stop. And you find that Sora is the goddess of sleep and dreams. She is widely viewed as sort of a pariah among the Fey gods because she has the ability to force people to sleep and they don't like that. Um, she is the goddess of peace or one of the goddesses of peace. That is her domain, but her primary domain is sleep and dreams. And she takes the form of a large white moth. And she is able to induce sleep by batting her wings and covering it in dust. Well, the gods haven't seemed to have much power over this place. I suppose. I don't know. I... Did you find something? Well, I found. I found the goddess of sleep. Um. But I can't remember. remember. Further, I would have to. I'd have to communicate with them or, or contact them. Hmm. And I don't. I well, <laughs> that would be very unlikely under normal circumstances, much less in a realm such as this. Well, um, our gods have enough power to, you know, enable us to fight and give us strength, so I wouldn't be too surprised if the dream deity was here somewhere, had some some sort of part in this. I suppose I'm just looking for any way to increase my mental fortitude while unconscious. You and me both. Well. Yes, might be a lofty goal, but mm. I did, I did know some. There was much talk about that skill uh, amongst monks and such that I knew years and years and years ago. So it's just grasping at straws. Well, I suppose the best we can manage right now is just a brisk slap in the morning, make sure everyone's all right. Um, yes. I suppose those of us who didn't spend an entire day asleep might be a good time to get some rest. You can all sleep at your leisure. I'm just going to continue to read these books. Well, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Zero's I, I gonna. Anything particularly action-packed, uh, and this whole interaction has made me very anti-sleep. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna spend as as long as I can before going to sleep, like uh, I praying to Zarakis, praying to uh, Sora. Was it? Yeah. Um, trying to make any kind of um, any kind of communication to I don't know it, like like Queen said he's grasping at straws I, I don't even know if, if he knows everything that he's saying everything that he's asking but just some kind of divine communication to strengthen his uh, sleep Um, roll a religion check for me, actually. Hey, that's better. That is 18 plus 5 is, uh, 23. Okay, um, what specifically are you praying to each god about? Um... I 
I think to both, uh, you know, to both Zarakis and to, you know, because Sweden's whole thing is, is passage between, um, you know, life and death. A lot of that passage does happen in people's sleep. I think there's a connection that he's drawing there between the two deities. Uh, I think from both, he just wants some assurance that or 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 there's something he can do to just protect himself uh while sleeping or just some some kind of protection um okay so um it's like meditation or or I, I don't know you feel like Zarakis has heard you um, you get that sort of feeling in your chest, that sort of warm feeling um, that you felt when the wolf was around. Um, but it's sort of not his place. Um, yeah. But as you say your prayers to Sora, um, you do feel a little bit of like, just more of a pull. And you hear a voice back. I hear you. That place is beyond what I can do for you, I'm afraid, but I can help it. The nightmares are strong there. Stronger than anything I can control. I can offer you some meager protection. If you'd like. It's just nice enough to have someone to talk to. Nice to make your acquaintance. Uh, your highness. You're a follower of the wolf. Yes. He and the rabbit were the only ones who were kind to me. <laughs> so, yes. if I can help you, then I suppose I'm paying it back in some way. Yes, I took a. Well, I took a not a substantial amount of. of physical damage, levels of exhaustion, as well as, well, physical pain upon waking up. If there's anything you can do to dull that, or I suppose anything you can show me while I dream tonight. Like I said, my influence is weak there, but... can only give you one. Reach into the left pocket of your room. We'll have to share it, but... Um, you pull out a small amulet that seems to be in the shape of a moth's wing, and um, as you pull it out, there's a little bit of sort of dust that comes off of it. Um, while wearing the amulet, your sleep cannot be disturbed, and you do not dream. Cool. You I... are also, while wearing the amulet, under the effects of a level 9 non-detection. Hell yes. I am... Okay, so... I do not dream. Sleep protection... Level 9... <laughs> Nix is here! Hello, Nix! Hello? Level 9... What was that? Sorry? Uh, level 9, um, non-detection. Non-detection. So, gonna... ma essentially, whoever is wearing the amulet doesn't have to make the nightmare checks. Cool. I'm gonna do something potentially selfish and not tell a word about that until the morning. And I'm gonna put it on and go to sleep. Alright. Um, you... Your sleep is dark and short. Uh, as far as you know, because you you sleep through the night, the I deepest soundest sleep you've ever had. Sora. <laughs> greatly appreciated. Um. Okay. Uh, and do any of the rest of you have any evening activities? I know Zir is just like completely just passing out. <laughs> Long shot. Long shot and possibly self-destructive. 
But Boz is in a mood, so he's going to actually look out the window and just for gits and shiggles, see if there's anything lone out there, like a, a lichen or a zombie or something that just happens to be strolling through. Um, you actually do see something. Uh, it's not a lichen or a zombie. Um, it is what appears to be a very large... wolf, essentially. But it's wrong. Um, it looks a little bit more like a warg. But you're also familiar enough with wargs to know that their their head is differently shaped than this creature. Its head looks too large, and it's the teeth that came out of its mouth come out at odd angles. That's just him? It's just him. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, okay, so he's not that far gone. <laughs> <laughs> There's. I have a dumb idea. Please sort me out of it, or else I'm going to go and cause so and probably cause damage to myself as well as something else. Am I watching you looking out this window here? Well, you're you're awake, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Then yes, you would see this. I'm also awake. What are you doing? Right now, I'm looking at something that looks like a messed up wog outside, and I'm very, very much contemplating wanting to cause it great harm. But I'm also aware that will likely cause me great harm. I would shy away from it. Do a push-up. Look out the window again. Another night. And I will go do 10 push-ups and then go to bed. As you're doing your push-ups, I'll say the more you do, the more anything watching us will know what we're capable of. They already know enough. Let's not write a book for them. If they've seen me do anything, they know what I'm capable of. I'm not like you people. I don't have. I can't warp space and time. I call on the gods. I swing a sword. There's nothing else to me. Well, there's not much to me either. So, um, Mazura, as he says that, as he gets to, there's not much else to me. His voice modulates momentarily, very briefly, into four different voices. I don't hear this, I'm presuming. No, you do not. No, I don't. Thank you. And I'll just look over the book at you. How many people are going to speak through that mouth? The hell are you talking about? Oh, you mean they can take me over. That's right. Well, they haven't taken me over yet. No. So. You what? spoke and you were in several different octaves all at once. What? Your voice. I didn't hear anything. I was just talking. Clovis, did you hear that, or am I losing my mind? Uh, did I hear it? You did. I'm in the you corner, also, you also noticed... trying to practice javelin strikes. Yeah, you did, and you would have also noticed that the very faint tattoos on his face glowed white for a second. Ah. You would have seen that too, Mizzou. Hmm. Also, it's pretty impressive ink that you have. Bostrick, when did you say you got those tattoos? Uh, shortly after my mom sat me down and told me about the ancestors. And from whom did you get them? Um, she did them actually. Hmm. It's your mother. That's why they're that's why they're very faint and they're very. What was her occupation? My mom. Uh, her occupation. Well, she worked for my granddad, who was a brewer, but in bars you meet all types, so she 
And also her her mother was a warrior, and her, her mother taught her how to do it. Hmm. Was Grandma a particular kind of warrior? I don't even remember. I never met her. I only heard about her. She was uh Arcane or shamanic? I don't remember. I don't know. I'd have to ask my mom. All I knew is she was a she was a, she went to the to the ancestors. Well, your ancestors may be on your face. What Mez is trying to say, uh, I think, is that for a moment there, your tattoos were not uh, well um, faint, as you had said. Uh, listen, Bosard, I'm. I'm sure based on most of the time that you've known me now, it doesn't seem the case, but I will remind you that before coming here, I also didn't do anything special. Um, I didn't even do the stuff that you do, just swing a sword. So uh, this place, I think, may make you different more so than you realize. But even if it doesn't, in any case, you can do things that we can't. I promise. That's why I want you to teach me how to fight. That's why we want you to devise strategies with us so that we can all fight better together. It's not always about what everyone else can do. Sometimes it's about what they can't do. You are what the rest of us aren't. So even if you can't cast fancy spells You've got stuff that we need. I could have, but I never could get it working. My, uh... Remember I mentioned that, that teacher, Old Man Zat? Mm -hmm. He had a trick he could do. The, the um... The Ravenkin. He called him Tengu because he was from the... The Dragon Isles. That's what... Mm -hmm. Never met anyone yeah. from the Dragon Isles. Always wanted to. Oh, you love old man's out. He, he had stories for every occasion. He was old. I mean, really old. For an do, elf, he was old. Do you love a good story? Almost as much as I love a good old person. <laughs> oh, you, you would have adored him. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, he had, he could do lots of fancy moves, and he tried to teach me, but I never could get it working. Hmm. So, there's a little bit of my bitterness about <laughs> magic. I tried. I couldn't. Well, I thought I was the same way. Turns out, apparently, I was just missing something. Maybe we'll find out what you're missing. Conviction. Follow through. I can see on your face that you're trying to deny these feelings. I really want to go over there and take my book out of his hands and smack him in the head with it for saying that. Whether or not he's correct. Well, you did want to practice with your spear, didn't you? Yes. Stop stopping yourself. Lose control a little. You might learn something. Uh, and I think Clovis will go back to his training. That's for the morning, I guess. And I'll, I guess I'll go to bed. Uh, before he does go back to his training, though, uh, after what, uh, what Missouri just said, I think Clovis is going to, he, before he does most of the things that he does, he gives a little like silent prayer to Stendar just as like a force of habit from from his days in the cloister. I think he's going to offer a second prayer to Bolgroff. Okay. 
Interesting. All right. I'll file that away for later. You do know, by the way, uh, you would know this, that there is a um, a goddess who fights with javelins. Mm. So if you want to give a prayer to her, you would Clovis would know who to talk to. And that is Cyrus the Huntress. Yeah, I, I, she's on my list as well. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think Clovis is his mind is too closed in still to realize that he can expand that far. He's like, okay, Stendar is kind of a war guy. <laughs> Bolgraf also a war guy, so maybe he'll help. He'll, he'll probably get there eventually. But gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted you to know Actually, that, that's a, that was an that's option. a good question. Has the thing with Bolgraf happened yet at this point in history? Yes. Then, then you would probably then would he know that? I, as a player, don't know it, so that might maybe would be important information. Um, I don't think so. Okay. That is that is a closely guarded secret amongst the clerics of Volgraf. And people who have played in this world before. <laughs> yeah. Out of, um, just to describe for the audience what uh, our dear uh, Boz is talking about, in the world, um, the two war gods get bored of being gods occasionally and will select a mortal to take their place. That has recently happened. Volgraf has recently ch switched. Hmm. So it's like Santa in the <laughs> in the Santa Claus. He's been Tim Allen. It's exactly he like got, Santa. He got, he oh, got Tim Allen. Well, yeah. well, well, the way, fell off the way that the way that that was switched was a little different. Um, <laughs> he a little fell bit off more. Uh... He said, "Hey," and he fell off a roof. <laughs> uh, we'll get. I'll tell you what happened in the break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I can say on the street. I'm sorry. Literally, he's, gonna gonna to he's just going to tell us. He's just going to tell us the uh, plot to Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you wish it was that simple, my right friend. Now. You wish it was that simple. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> just because I love this world so much and I want, it, and I want more exposition on it. Well... Uh, so yeah, Clovis is just yeah. doing his drills. He thinks they're drill. He's do. He's trying to copy what he's seen Bosric and Missouri doing, like at other points, but with a spear, which he hasn't seen either one of them. Do. So it's not like good. We but will get you a spear. Fair enough. And then and I will uh, teach eventually, you yeah. And then, and then eventually, he. he I'm surprised you're not doing what your spirit guardians do, since they're um they're hoplites, aren't they? He'll get there. He'll okay. get there. Okay. Listen. He'll get there. Too much book. Too much book I understand. in brain. Um, Missouri, do you have anything you want to do during your uh, coffee session? Uh, no, no. It's, uh, I've got people staying awake, so I really can't do too much. <laughs> well, I think everybody's gone to bed now. No, they haven't. <laughs> I think uh, Clovis was staying awake, wasn't he? As an oh, yeah, elf, he's... as an elf, he stays awake for four hours, but then there's four yeah. hours of rest when he does go to sleep. Uh, probably not. Anything he did would have been early on. Okay. Once everybody's asleep, he's in sentry mode. All right. Then the next dawn or the closest approximation you can to a day cycle in this horrible, crusty world happens. And you all wake up refreshed. Um, but I need, uh, everyone except Queden to roll a wisdom save. <laughs> Boo-hoo. Because Queden's cheating. 18. <laughs> That's okay. what religion is. <laughs> I, think I think I've already asked this before, but is this a spell or other magical effect? Yes, it is. Great. And yes, you do get advantage. Haha, -ha, that means I also get advantage. I love being an L. Where are my correct dice? I got a 15. All right, we're using this one. Um, Take advantage on it, Nez, because uh, because you don't sleep. I did, uh, my first roll was a nat 20, so... <laughs> okay, there you go. 
Uh, this is what, a wisdom saving throw? Wisdom save, yeah. Okay, 17. Okay. Um, it's the dice that I want. Zir, unfortunately, you do have a nightmare. <laughs> and you take a single point of exhaustion. Okay. Um, you don't take any psychic damage because uh, you passed the first threshold. You just didn't pass the second one. So you have sure. one point of exhaustion. I'm good for that. It have been applied. Um, and you said you, I'm sorry, you got a 17, Clovis? Yes. You take the exhaustion as well. Shit! Damn. He's nerfing us. We're too powerful. Yes, your your don't... level six is too powerful. I can't I can't uh, handle you guys at level six. It, it's no, gonna throw off my whole campaign. I don't think no that's DM the ever highest I've ever been as a PC is level eight. I've never oh well, then you're gonna love this campaign. <laughs> you're going to level nine, baby. Hell <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that's when the Jinx. fun stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I try to at least get my campaigns to level 16, if not further. Sweet. Fond memories of level 20 month. How do you, how do, you do exhaustion on D&D &D Beyond? Uh, oh, you just uh, kind of do click it. Click on the conditions box, and it's at the very bottom of the least. I was fully wrong. I got an 18. How am I, by the way? You're fine. Okay. That, you know, now now that you it's been a one-point difference, the hat has been tipped. The, the secondary threshold is 18. And meets beats. So Good to know. I'll definitely remember that all the time forever. Mm -hmm. The first threshold is 10. Nice. Uh, just one level. And what are the two? It's 10 yes, for... Just one. 10 is exhaustion and psychic damage. 18 is... Just exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, you guys wake up decently well rested, but... um. Let's talk about the nightmares you have. Um, Zir will do you first. Um, you sleep relatively well for most of the night. Um, but sort of as you're coming out of sleep, you're in that kind of weird like zone between wakefulness and sleep. You kind of wake up in the bed here in the tavern, and all three of your siblings are sitting around. And see that uh, Leif is crying and oh. Gwen walks over and says Leif Leif it's okay and um, yeah. Leif just looks down at her hands and says I can still feel it Gwen I, I can still feel him ripping me apart from the inside the spores it hurts so bad why does it hurt we're dead I shouldn't why does it hurt all the time Hey, um, what's, what's going on? Um, they don't seem to re to be able to hear you, and Gwen says, it's okay. It's okay. And Leif says, I know, I know she did all she could, but I can't. Why do I blame her for this? Um, wasn't she strong enough to stop this? And then you snap back awake in your bed in an empty room. Clovis, when you finally go to sleep, you find yourself in that gray city again. And this time the city is overpopulated by these hooded figures. And as you walk outside, the city stops, and they all turn to look at you. You can see that they all have your face, but it has this sickening grin on it. And as one throughout the city, you hear, You were so fun. Let's do it again. Run little turtle. Run! And you snap back to wakefulness. 
I think he like runs out of his bed and then flops onto the floor. Okay. Um, Cause in dreamland, he at the word run fully was like, yep, that's what I'm doing. Long yeah. shot, but can I have an aborted nightmare since I actually, uh, since I actually passed? Um, no, because of the way the nightmares were. <laughs> Fair. I had some choice words for her. <laughs> so, uh, you all make your way back into the common area where Missouri is still reading his book. Well, Clovis's book. Um, two of you looking a little worse for wear. Got to you too? Yes. This place sucks. It hit me last night. Or the night, the night before. Still, I suppose I'll take this to the alternative. I have potential news. If, uh, well, again, it is still a theory being tested, but if my theory of the body snatchers approaching us via nightmares is true, I came across through some prayers last night a uh, a light cure. Uh, I prayed to Sora, the, the dream goddess, and, and she gave me this. I didn't dream at all last night. No good dreams, no bad dreams. I just passed through peacefully exactly as she said I would. I only have one. So I suppose if anybody has a particularly difficult dream that is affecting them greatly, or... I suppose what this means is, if my theory is correct, you all have full guarantee that I am who I say I am. At least for today. And I just sort of nod and, and take two steps back. <laughs> okay. It's something. It uh, is. I'm... I, I hope... Well, I went through it too. I, I... Nightmares are not fun. I... That'll be um, an incredibly helpful tool. Sorry, I'm not, I don't, like, I don't know what a proper response to this is. So, like, yes, good, I, good. I, it's good I, that we have this. It's very good. I just, I just wanted to share with the... Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure the silence in the room didn't feel, like, judgmental no, you, thank, in any you, sort thank of you, way. You, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it, it's just because, bit. I like, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things that someone says and you just go, like... Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, catalog oh, I was, brain, sure. I was, was already like, thinking in terms of, all right, so we sleep in shifts. And we yes, it's sort of, like, crap. neutrally positive. Potentially, potentially, yes. Um, yes, that is... I had already I, started processing yeah. like, oh, okay, sure, so sure, sure 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 yes thank you boss uh and i like take a step towards boss how, how, like, no. oh, oh i'm sorry I, I, yes I, I spaced out i'm sorry and how do you no, all decide no. who uh who gets the stone i don't know man i just thought it was helpful information to we have. can draw straws sleeping <laughs> shifts yes um What's on the to-do list, gang? And I, I fully sit down. <laughs> it's like, I say that and I sit down. <laughs> awesome. We do have a vampire to, to fight, don't we? Three. Couldn't it just be the one? It could. It won't be, but it could be. Um, it. as Love you guys it. are talking, you actually hear a little, very gentle 
at the door of the tavern. Oh. And um, Lady Thane picks up her rifle and kind of prepares it. And as she opens the door, um, you see probably a girl aged between maybe 15 and 18 um, with long black hair. And she says, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm a little lost. I... And um, a woman kind of very slowly starts to walk towards the door and says, Talia? Is it my Talia? And the girl looks past Amelia and goes, Mati? Mati! And runs in and hugs this woman. And as her hair moves away from her eye, you see that one of her eyes is purple. Get the sense that you've met this girl before, but you can't put a finger on where. Well, I just failed the first social interaction that I had upon waking <laughs> up, so I'm not going to engage with that at all, but you guys are welcome to... Can I do a perception check and see if anything about her seems familiar? That would give mm -hmm. me an inclination. Yeah, give him a help action. Yeah, go for it. All right, I'm going to try to use roll 20. <laughs> okay. Every time you do that, it goes poorly. <laughs> you keep saying every session you're going to try. I, I try at least once. Wait, I had the help action, so is that with advantage? It's with advantage, yeah, so just roll again. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, you've seen that eye before. That was that very specific color of purple is the same color of purple that was on the side of Katia's face that was so deformed. Um, I'll look at uh, the group and just be like, and I'll point to the eye and I'll just go. What? Her eye is very familiar. Um, it reminds me of somebody who we met in the basement. Oh. I understand now. It took me a second, but I got it. I mean, do we do anything about that? Considering the lengths you went through among with others to potentially set her free and her find another life, I considered it to be useful information to you. Yeah, but that's not who she said she is. But she was uh, someone before she was someone else. Dreadmaster, does she seem to recognize or respond to us at all? She hasn't noticed you yet. She is crying into her mother's shoulder. Um, yeah, I, I was... She hasn't done anything except run into a lost loved one. If this becomes a problem, I, I say we leave it be. I think Clovis is going to approach uh, very, very gently um, and put a hand on both of their shoulders and say, Hello, welcome. I just wanting to check in. Are you hurt at all? Because one of our party members is able to heal. So if you have any wounds, uh, no, I take a look. I feel like I've been sleeping for a long time. I got lost in the woods. And um, her mother, actually, like after she like lets go of the hug, actually slaps her across the face and says, 200 years! Two hundred years you were gone, Talia. Didn't know what happened. And Talia just kind of puts her hand to her face. I, I'm sorry, Mati. I, I wandered into the castle. The nice lady said she would take care of me. And she said she would bring me home. And then the next thing I remember, I was in the woods again.
Right. Well, uh, ma'am, I understand that you probably feel very hurt by having lost your daughter for so long, but perhaps focus on the fact that she's back. She has, well, like, after slapping her, has immediately gone back to hugging her. Mm -hmm. This world that we found ourselves in so often takes. I'm so happy for you that it has given something back. Uh, and Clovis will give her a little pat on the shoulder and retreat back to the group. Um, roll a perception check. Okay. Um, that's a 19. Okay. Um, Talia okay. reaches up and scratches the side of her neck that has the um, purple eye. And as she takes her hand down before her hair kind of cascades back, you see what looks like a pair of birthmarks on her neck right here. Two of them. Hmm. Okay. Not wounds, birthmarks. What color are they, Dreadmaster? They're white, as if they were at one time scars. Cool. Not my thing. Got it. <laughs> no, not corruption. <laughs> um, Excellent day. That, that does not require a perception check. You can see that on her hands. Is corruption. There is corruption on her hands. Not much, but there is some on her hands. Mm -hmm. But the scars on her neck are some from something else. Mm-hmm. Wealthy scars. I wonder what. Um. Okay. I can't. I can't personally do anything about that. Uh, I think Clo as Clovis approaches the rest of the group, he'll look uh, at everyone, but but specifically at, at Zir and Boz. Well, all things considered, this may be a happier resolution than I think even I was expecting. I agree. You look troubled, boss. Oh, I've already moved on to thinking about if we're going to be in going into a fight. Mm. Fair enough. So this... This vial the matron gave you, what exactly is that? Hold. I was say, right when she took a bite. <laughs> the stomach it's acid cold. of a frost worm. Hmm. Appetizer. And you put it on a weapon and it gives it cold damage? Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Neat. It's Love another that. wet. It is another wet. Uh, can it only be... How much is there? Could we all get a sort of... Three uses. A chop? Three, Three uses. uses. Okay. And, um, well, since it's like a poison, basically, I... You know, once you get your hit in, it sinks in. Mm. It isn't like a spell. I don't think you can miss. Mm. Well, I suppose mm. if, it, if you were applying to weapon, you could miss the weapon. But... Once you strike true. Or in this with combat. So it's better used in somebody else's hands. I mean, we do specifically have a sort of weapon guy. Yes. I think we can all agree. Don't, don't, uh, don't you know, don't second guess Zia either. She's, she can do, oh, she does the one shot that counts. I my avoid sword. his precision. My rapier's hot. I don't yeah, know how I that don't, works. I don't know that applying a cold juice to an already hot juiced sword is gonna... Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know that we can sort of it's, stack the juices. So, I would hate yeah. for the one oh, juice to sort stacking of... Stacking the juices or canceling out the juice. You can't really double juice. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. I'm gonna go to, over to the bar and get a drink after hearing this. I just don't want to be part of this conversation. <laughs> can I go with you? Can, can the DM leave the game for yeah, a minute? Yeah, you can come with that's, me. That's, never never in my life have I regretted giving a magic item to a player more. 
<laughs> Last well, time so you this, left the game, we all this, decided we were level 20 and had infinite so this inspiration. Cold, so cold, wet juice. So what do we got going on here? I think we I, give the cold, wet juice to Bosric. Because I will Bosric... drop an ancient red dragon on you, so help me. I don't Bosric... think we need to I'm at the bar. Leave me alone. Juice. I think the juice was given to Zir. I think Zir can, can dole out her juices as she sees fit. Call it juice one more time. Call it juice one more time. If that's it, if even Boz is like, all right, enough of that. It's the Bosric can apply it to his sword, but could also potentially apply it to the crossbow, and would be no, able to. No. Oh my gosh, I have idea. a bow! I have a bow! I have a bow! I can no, put it on I'm the bow. Zero is accomplished. Zero is accomplished. Fair. Then I think the oh, sort oh. of splitting it between the two of you and your various weapons would be, I think, would be wise. I'm good for that. Yeah, especially since they'll be gunning for me anyway. Mm. I definitely don't want it. Why do you say that? Because they know he can turn Mary into an ice spider. And they've already tried gunning for him before. Mm. I for gore. That makes sense. Mm. So I'm just a big old target. You guys need to move quick. If it comes to that. And also be ready to to cover you. If you don't hit them, then they're going to be basically s smoke. You're not going to be able to touch it's them. True. So it's true. covering me is a moot point. So why are we killing them? If. Is that, is if, that what we're doing right now? If. Um, I, I, I feel we should go to uh, Tradot Manor and uh, see if we can get information. Uh, if it comes to a fight then it comes to a fight, but we're also now armed with the information that their daughter is not dead. What um what information are we trying to find? We need information. Things on the other on the other dukes. On the other dukes and if possible And the thing underneath. The dukes, the thing underneath, and potentially we need to find information on what exactly is limiting the power of the matron. Would we not want to go to Gregor for that? He's the one that's most aligned with us, based on the matron. True, but if we had uh, another interesting thing, would be gathering things that could be of value to him. Hmm. Just going to him and asking for things is easier if we have something he's interested in. Going to Gregor originally may have been wise, but we didn't have the information for that. At this point, we've done some damage to the Seltra Dots, and I don't want to have caused that and then walk away unresolved, given that they know the location of this building and all of the people that we want to protect. Sure. Okay. Also, did we not have to take care of all of the Dukes anyway for the Matron? No. Well, technically, she never said they had to be dealt with, just that they have something limiting her power. If we can... I'm not suggesting necessarily that we kill her, but we do have to resolve this somehow. Yes. At this point, we have to consider that ever that the Seltra Dots are hostile, which makes them a threat. Which means we should deal with them as soon as we can. Okay, dokes. It would help. We have them. certainly we certainly broke the rules she set. Oh, every single one. She didn't anticipate us to follow them. Maybe not, but she's still going to take umbrage. She's a noble. What other people what other people think won't matter to her. Well, I guess let's go. Or do we wanna stay here for a few days and make sure y'all are armored up? Is there anything that we can get Zier? I've already gotten quite a bit of stuff, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I... But is there anything that can make you a little bit more durable? Perhaps it's gilded optimism that... Nah. We've got healing potions. We've got... I think at least for one combat encounter, we will 
be as safe as we have been previously. Personally, I wouldn't turn down the ability to train for a couple of days, both on a personal level and also us as a group, um, because we really do need to find out some sort of tactics. Uh, I think we're starting to feel the effects of not not being a particularly cohesive unit. Um, hmm. Indeed. We're, I'm we gonna seem to be trudging along, but I think... It you know, gives us some time to try out that sleeping and shifts thing, too. Hmm. And we'll be here, so if any, like, this is the place they would attack. I'm going to step away and, uh, excuse me, Madam Thane, do you happen to have anything extra like this? And I'm pulling on my uh, my studded leather. She takes a look at it, um, and sort of just, like, runs her fingers over it. How do you mean, like, you want this to be better, or do you want something like this? Oh, if you could make this better, that would be exceptional, but... Um... If I make this better, as we'll slow you down. Uh, Mar, our uh, our uh, youngest friend there um, could use uh, a little bit of an upgrade, especially if she's going to be wielding blades against the sisters. I do. I do perhaps have something, but it will require something else in return. It is a powerful artifact that I had in, well, it's not an artifact, but it is a powerful magical item that I had during my time in the material world, and I would happily trade it to you, but unfortunately it will be costly. I cannot part with it for nothing. How costly? I require a magic item in exchange or something of equivalent value. And the value is? I imagine you want to keep... I imagine you want to keep the skull that you still have for study or whatever purposes, but another magical item of... Suitable worth. I leave it up to you to offer it, and I will tell you if it is worth it to me or not. I unfortunately cannot tell you that, because your worth on something and my worth on something are not going to be the same. Hmm. I'm going to return to the group. Um, do we have an inconsequential, uh, to at least to us, magical item? Zir can apparently get a powerful armor if we have something to offer up in exchange. Now, the only thing I can think of is one of the vials. That, nope. makes, that makes things very difficult, but... I don't think we're at liberty to be making any sort of exchanges right now. I feel very comfortable and very close to whatever gifts I've been given. Not that this Another matters. reason to go uh, back to the castle, see if there's anything else we can pawn off. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's something that's available to us. Yes. Uh, who did we trade the skull to? Was it to her? To her. Okay. okay, so she already has one. Okay, never mind. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to return to her and say, what about just adding some studs to the leather she has now? That shouldn't be too much. No, but we would need to take the armor. You would be stuck here, and if you were attacked, we would not be able to armor her. How long, would... Um, how long would it take to add the studs? Two days, so by the time that the rest of the armor was done, We are attacked here. She cannot fight. Well, she can. I'm not going to tell her what to do, but it would be unwise. Uh, I will reach use if you can be without your armor for two days. They can make it slightly better. Add some studs to it. I guess. 
if anything comes, shoot with the uh, the bow, I guess. From a distance. Uh, I'll return over. Uh, we can be without the armor for uh, the duration. All right. We didn't get here. Zir. Uh, I'm not going to take off her armor. Um, <laughs> if you give the matron your armor, she can add studs. Did you not think I'm capable without it? I think you're capable without it, but I think we should take every opportunity to be as prepared as possible. If there was an actual upgrade for me, I'd be asking for it as well. There's not. Uh, sure, you're the best you can be. No, literally, I can wear what you can wear, and without reducing my uh, potential, this is the best I can wear. Anything more is going to make me ineffective. Okay. Zero will slink off and uh, take the armor off and bring it back over. Okay. Uh, she takes it and starts to apply um, or takes it off to have things applied. And It's going to seem like what I'm about to do was planned when you took the armor off. I promise it's not. This is what was going to happen. <laughs> you hear outside the door a Folks. When we left the team, Seer had given over her armor for improvements, and everyone was waking up after some horrendous nightmares when suddenly there was a horrible screech outside the door of the tavern. As they ran to the door, they saw the creature Osric had seen last night. A horrible amalgamation of wolf, person, and monster. And I think this is the wrong music, wouldn't you say, chat? I thought it was good. <laughs> it sounds lovely. He's come to parlay. No. I'm so scared. I need for my lovely players to roll some initiative. Let's go. Okay. Don't forget. Why to can click... I never roll in double digits for initiative? Don't forget to click your token so That's... your initiative goes to the tracker. But so sorry. I ro I rolled physically. It was an eleven. That's okay. I can add you in. Thank you. Hello. Did it work? Um. Oh, yeah, I see Clovis, I see Boz, I see Mez, I see Zier. Dude, now that I don't have armor on, I'm initiative as hell. You are. <laughs> Wait, did your armor <laughs> limit your initiative? No. <laughs> I just narratively, look, because I got a 28 for initiative. Like, I'm so light and breezy. I'm unhindered. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, uh, at the top of the lineup, we have Zier. Hello. Um, pay no attention to the token. What you see is actually a horrible wolf dog-like monster. Is it that guy? looks semi-humanoid. It's kind of looks like it's trying to stand up on its haunches, but it is failing. So it's just on these gigantic, like, gorilla-like forearms. Terrible. Yeah, I love this for us. It's good so stuff. the windows are barred. Is there? Yes. Bless you. Um, is there a means to shoot from within the tavern at all? Has Shooting anything thing? except a rifle from inside the tavern, because the way the bars are, will be possible. But you will be shooting with disadvantage. That's fine. I'll take that in my unarmored form. I will. I will accept that. <laughs> Um, so I will go up to a window. This looks like a window, yes? That is a window. 20, 20, okay, I'm here. Um, and I will go ahead and take that disadvantaged shot. At Who the big man. Shoot. At the big man? Okay. At the big man. At the biggest man. With disadvantage to hit, I got an 11. 
That will be a miss. Uh, it kind of ting tings off the bars. Nice. Sounds good. All right. We have, we have two attacks now. Uh, some of you do. I don't think rogues ever do get a second attack. Rogues not ever get a second attack? No. Oh, no. Not drat. by default, no. Rude. Okay. Oh, I see where it says so, that. Great. Can I fit my arm through the bars at all or no? Uh, you would still be taking disadvantage for that, for the ranged spell attack. Okay. Screw it. I'll just take the disadvantage. Um, all right. I will, uh, am I near a window? Yeah. Uh, kind of, yeah. Mary's standing right in front of one. I'm just going to move Mary a little here and get out of my way, and I'll move here. Oh, I like to cunning action hide, by the way. Okay. Oh, ah! Health. Damn it. All right. <laughs> I got a 20, but I got to roll again because I have disadvantage. That's unfortunate. Was it a natural 20? Yeah, it was a natural 20. Then just don't roll a one. Uh, no, no. The second one was a three. <laughs> All right, so the, the natural 20 uh, connects. Oh, okay. I'm going to roll the uh, second one first. Uh, that's going to be a 16. Um, the 16 is the lower of the two. Okay, the 16 will miss. Okay, so the first one will do... Um, you said uh, max damage. So, so it's 15. And plus a d10. All right. Plus 7. It's 22. Okay. Nice. As that just kind of whips through the bars and uh, I, I, I'm going to say it probably just scored him in the arm because uh, the difficulty of making the shot. Yeah. And uh, gonna... It kind of Ooh. roars and uh, but yeah, your hit seems to have done some damage. And then I'm going to have Mary move, like, right here to the side. So if he kind of tries to come through the window, Mary can uh, hold action in case anything comes through that window. Okay. And that'll be my turn. All right. We're my, learning. My stealth was a 23, by the way, for my hide. I got that. You are successfully hidden as far as you know. Nice. Uh, Clovis, you're up. As far as right. you know. Uh, okay. Clovis is going <laughs> to... Book it to this window here, um, <clears throat> and I need to see them, but I don't have to shoot at them from here. Uh, so I'm going to cast Sacred Flame at the largest boy. Okay. Uh, so that will be... Uh, it's a deck save from him, DC 17. All right. Uh, he passed. He passed? Okay. Okay. Uh, no damage then. Um, I will stand there with my shield ready, um, and I'm going to uh, look to Boz and say, "On your orders, Captain." Uh, and that's the end of my turn. Okay. Um, it is the massive feral lichen's turn. Uh, it is going to realizing that you guys are going to stay inside. Uh, it is going to run to the door, and it is going to try and. Batter it down. Uh, so, okay. Okay. Uh, the door cracks and bends, but it does not open yet. But you can, the cracks are starting to form in that uh, support. Do the, do the civilians have a turn? Have they moved away? Uh, the civilians do have a turn. Um, they have a turn at the bottom of the initiative order. Okay, great. But as of right now, everyone is just where they were when everything started. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Osric. Uh I will... So one more round and that door is going, right? Um, at best. Okay. I'm going to look to Lady Thane... Same as before, uh, to the to the tunnels, and I'm gonna pull my sword and hold action. The minute he gets through that door, I'm unleashing all my attacks, and I will bonus action, um, fighting spirit. Okay. Uh, Whedon. For those attacks. 
Cool. Um, I did have another idea. Well, first of all, does him approaching the door mean that I can no longer see him? Uh, yes. He is sort of in that little alcove of the door there. Well, fuck. I was gonna make I him. Should, I, I was gonna make him run away. Um. But you can see the four that are sort of, sort of a little further back. I don't care about them. I. I you will well, in a turn. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, they've got. <laughs> but it looks like they've got bows. Care about them. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I well, first. Okay, I really didn't want him to break down this door. Okay. Um, I should have wished for a higher initiative. That goes that that's that's my ass for wanting low initiative rolls. All right. Um I am going to yeah, I finally see the benefit of rolling high on initiative. I am truly I think I much prefer rolling lower. Um I like a nice middle initiative. Mm-hmm. Um it makes you feel better. I took alert, and I still can't crack. Well, I think it makes sense for a cleric to be reactionary in the actions rather than proactive. Um, bu- 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 I, well, I guess we'll definitely start with uh, the old, uh, you know, bonus action spiritual weapon out there. Okay. So anywhere uh, within six squares, where do you want it? Oh, anywhere within six squares of me. Then I guess it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be on this guy then. Uh, Right on the other side of the door. Okay. Try and slow him down a little bit. Yeah, give me just one second. Let me find a glaive for you. There we go. Roll to hit was a 27. Okay, that hits. D8 plus 4 is 10 damage. Alright. And coming out swinging, uh, I'm just going to go over to, uh, to a window to Mr. Um, let's see, what's my guiding bolt at? That'll get there, right? 120? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, disadvantage, though, because of the bars. Disadvantage? Mm-hmm. For why? Uh, because of the bars. Uh, oh. They're designed for guns, not for arms and arrows. Right. Sure. Okay. Um, also, firearms proficiency is a feat you can take. It does not exist in the book, but because firearms exist in this world, when you could take a feat if you want to be proficient in rifle and pistol, you can't be. Cool. Uh, thanks for that uh, piece of information. <laughs> um, I am. I Might guess be good I'm, for Zero and Missouri if they're dex based. I guess I'm just gonna freaking uh, do the. Th- God, I had a really cool. Anyway, uh, we're gonna. <laughs> I I love this game so much. That's true. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm going to fucking Guiding Bolt. Okay. I mean, Guiding Bolt yes. blue, I assume. Yes. All right. We're going to do physical dice for this cuz I don't trust with disadvantage. I don't trust that with disadvantage. All right. That's a first roll is a 19. And my second roll, wait, is also a 19. There I rolled go. 19 twice. Let's fucking go. All, All right. right. And 5d6. 22 damage to Mr. Blue. Mr. All Blue right. It crackles. Yeah. All right. And he is marked with the guiding bolt. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Uh, well, right. I guess maybe I'll prep for when this guy gets through the door by just, like, moving back over this way. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, you actually, have that I much movement? I, I don't think yeah. I can do that. Nope. Never yeah. mind. I, um. Okay. 
Uh, so the um, thank you. It's okay. The lichens outside, uh, who do in fact have bows, as you may have seen, um, pull them back, and you can see that the bows are the arrowheads are black and disgusting, and they are aiming a shot at um. Two of them are aiming shots at Whedon. One of them is aiming a shot at Mary, and one of them is actually aiming a shot into this room. So they are also at disadvantage. So, uh, Quedan, these are the two against you. First one is an eight. I imagine that misses. Second one is even better, a five. All right, so they both miss you uh, against Mary. Uh, natural one. Uh, and then this one is firing into the room. No, it's all so. What? You said it's firing into the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tommy Wiseau so is going to die. Uh, okay. Um, you hear a kind of ping as that, uh, hits metal. And they kind of roar but they seem to have been ineffectual. That will bring us to Zir. Yeehaw. Yeehaw, howdy. Um... Well... Hmm. I'm I'm gonna shoot what is the sorry, what is the symbol by blue? He's guiding bolted, so uh he hits against him of advantage, so shooting through the bars just be a straight roll. Yeehaw. Well I'm also hiding. I have double advantage, which means nothing. Unfortunately, yeah, it means nothing. Heck yeah! <laughs> I shoot at him! <laughs> And I get a 15 to hit. That hits. Heck yeah. That is a 7 piercing damage. All right. He takes 7 damage. Um, And then <laughs> I'm going to look to everyone else and be like, um, is this, is this good enough? Because this is kind of all I've got. <laughs> you use a crossbow. Do I'm actually I... responding to you. Real quick, Zir. Um, Bosrick will actually respond. Can you use a crossbow? I don't know. I don't think so. I kinda, um, I'm kind of attached to my... my I was just going to say... I've got the I've got the syllables. You can use uh, use this. Might do a little more damage, but up to you. If you, if you can't do crossbows, then can I see some? Are you proficient in crossbows? No, I don't fucking know. Um, not. if you're just a rogue, you're you're, okay. you're not. No. It says I am. No. Oh, okay. Then I guess yeah, you are. Rogues rogues start with crossbow as one of the options. I think they start with light bow. crossbow. Mm, it mine is a light. Crossbows. Mine is a. Mine's just a crossbow. It's not like a heavy okay. crossbow. Okay. I believe. Says, I believe I have a light crossbow. It says so. proficient in crossbow, hand, longsword, rapier, short sword, oh. and simple weapons. Then you're proficient yeah. in only hand crossbows. Uh oh. Which are I have a light pistol crossbow. crossbows. Oh. Damn. Very cool. Um, did you hand me a bolt or two? Can you shoot a bolt from a bow? I can try. You can't. They're not designed for that. I know, but Zira would like to try. <laughs> Zira is welcome to try. Excellent. Mm, I don't know if I want to save the bolts for that, but... No. Please, okay. Please do not waste our, our silver bolts. Uh, Zira, that... Zira would really like to, but if you don't give them to her, she'll, she won't be upset about it. No, I'm holding my action anyway, so I can't. 
cool. All right, that will bring us to. Do I need um, to re-hide, or does my hide still? They know where you are every time you attack them, so you need to hide again. Great. Okay, I do that. Okay. And the way it works is, if you miss with an attack, you don't have to re-hide. But if you if you hit, they that key in on sense. where it came from. Yeah. Seventeen. Uh, as far as you know, you're hidden. Hell yeah. Missouri. I, I love DM phrasing. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to move to here. Okay. And I'm holding my attack until uh, Big Boy walks through the door. Okay. And uh, is Mary able to share a square with uh, my team? No. Damn. Is she, the, is she a shadow stalker? Yeah, uh, she's the shadow. Yeah, right here. Then she's too small. Is she? Yes. Shadow stalkers are huge creatures. All right, let me get that. <laughs> Did you just change the token, or do you need me to do it? I just, I just upsized it. Yeah. All right. Uh... Yeah, shadow stalkers are gigantic. It's a big kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that. Oh, reach with ten feet. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have Mary move right here. And hold her attack for if he comes, uh, breaks in that door so she can attack as well. Okay. Clovis. Yeah. Um, does it look like this door can be braced from the inside? Like, can we, can we fight against this thing being able to break the door down or is it just? Yes, you can. Okay. It will be rolling a post strength checks to break it down against you. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, Clovis is going to try and cast uh, Sacred Flame again. Uh, so okay. another dexterity saving throw. DC 17. Um, against the big one, you actually can't see it. Well, no, you're right next to that one window, so you can see it. Hmm. Um, okay. Ah, uh, fail. All right. Then that's going to be... Uh, 10 radiant damage. Okay. Uh, as Clovis just peeks through the uh, the window and does his <laughs> his magic snap. All right. Um, and then uh, I think he's going to scoot one over uh, to be next to Boz, and he's going to put his shield against the door and press into it uh, and look to Boz and say, do you think we can keep this thing up? No. All right. Um, All right. Best bet's to kill it. Mm -hmm. It is the big guy's turn. Uh, the big guy is going to try and smash through the door. Uh, I am. I am trying to brace it still. Okay. Uh, roll a strength check. Ooh, that's a 21. Okay. Um, you are able to hold the door, but you do feel it push against you, and I need you to actually roll a dexterity save now. Okay. Um, is this something that my shield master feet would interact with at all? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so I Which is only the... that if you, if you succeed, you'll take no damage. Got it. Um... So dex is plus one. Uh, so can I add my shield's AC bonus to the roll? No. Okay. Uh, Not in this case. In that case, it is a 16. Okay. Um, so you will take a little bit of damage. Okay. Uh, four. Four piercing damage as shards of wood just fly into your face. Oh, no. All right. Um, so it's going to try and hit the door again. Um. Uh, you, uh, it's kind of taken aback by the fact that the door seems braced, and it actually gets just pushed off the door. Um, all right. Bosser. Um. It's not appear to be much I can do. I will, I guess, just... 
Uh, the I did move away from the closest window, which we do know has a line of sight on it. So I don't know if you can shoot it with your crossbow from there. A line of sight for non-targeted attacks. You can't shoot. Ah, okay. Got it. Yeah. Which is why Zir couldn't shoot it either. You could always open the door and go outside and say hi. Why would we do that? I don't know. Well, we maybe don't want this door to break. Correct. Correct. Going outside might actually be better than having them just pelt the walls of this tavern. Correct. <laughs> I'm all for you opening the door. I'm holding a, <laughs> an attack. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, I was saying on three. One, two, three. And... and uh, open the door. Okay. Um, it was off balance from its one attack, so it's not going to get any opportunity attacks. So, so uh, now, so its held action triggers. Next down the line would be Missouri's. All right. Let's see. That's going to be okay. So, and that one is not going to hit. Oh. Nope. Um, roll damage. All right, give me a second. Ten sided. This is just bad all around. That's another nat one. So six damage. Total? Six damage total. Yeah. All right. Um, Clovis, you feel a f hit you in the back of the head as an eldritch blast cracks you between the shoulder blades. All right, and that's six damage. Six. Six. Yeah. Dope. All right. Um, Could have been worse. Could have been the door. Okay, sure. the second roll's not bad. It's a 17 plus, uh, where is it? 17 plus 8, so 25. Okay, that hits. And it's going to be uh, 8 plus 5, so 13. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. Um, all right, then, Osric, it's your turn. There's no... A real place I can move and flank this guy, right? You actually can't walk past it. He is taking up that I entire just, space. I'm just, I'm just holding. So I'm just holding the spot. All right. Oh, wasted that fighting spirit, but whatever. You didn't necessarily. If he'd broken through the door. Yes, I did. No, I did. I did. I did 100% waste that fighting spirit. It did nothing except give me five temp HP. That is a waste. <laughs> Uh, and that is also a... That is a fatalistic way to, to look at preparation, but okay. 18 hits. Alright. Um... Eight. Alright. Let me try with the macro this time. <laughs> yeah, that didn't do jack. Nope. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard to get the sword back up because of the tight orders. I'll right. just roar in its face. Okay. We didn't. Cool. Uh, I, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give us potentially some opportunity to uh, get outside and fight this thing outside. Um, I am going to, uh, now the first thing I'm going to attempt to do is, uh, cast command and tell him to flee. Uh, if you will let me, rule of cool, uh, give him disadvantage on that check because I have speech of beast and leaf, which gives me advantage on any, uh, checks trying to... Ba, 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 ba. You have advantage on any and all checks, uh, to influence a beast. Uh, if if you'll let me <laughs> make that call, the I command... will, and I will also say that because of your knowledge of beasts, you would know that you cannot command this creature. Oh, its mind is too imbalanced. Okay, so well... it would not understand the language that you are speaking. 
which is a requirement for the command spell. It is. It is. Cool. Good to know. So I've just, I'll let you rule of cool. Rule of cool, that will work on other it, like and like it creatures. It, it would have worked, yeah. but not in this situation. Not cool. in this situation, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, good to know for the future. I'll pocket that bit of information away. Uh, um, and instead of doing that, I will... Okay, well, I'll do my go-to when I don't know what else to do on a turn, and I'll roll that attack for the bonus, uh, for the spiritual weapon first. Go for it. Uh, I have to roll, yeah, roll attack as well for it. Okay, cool. Let me find it, my bad. It's okay. It's, uh, spell attack, so it's d20 plus wisdom mod plus three. Cool. Found it. Hey, that's a nat 20. Nice. So that's max damage plus a roll. Yes. Does D&D Beyond automatically? Yes. 11. Oh, wait, sorry. You said, oh. what, what was your ruling on? So it's, you take the maximum damage that you could roll on the dice, and then you Great. roll the dice as if it had been a, a regular hit. And you add them together. Ah, that is different from what D&D Beyond would do. Yes. So that's 8. So technically, it's not rules as written. 2d8 plus 4, so that's... So that is 20 plus 2d8. Beautiful. Let me do that. Uh, I rolled a eight and a one, so, so uh, twenty-nine additional nine. Hell yeah! All right, that's not nothing. This yeah, this creature's actually looking rough. Fuck yeah! Yeah, you guys have beat the brakes off of it. Cool. Knowing that, <laughs> um. Ah, but I just, mm, well, no, that was a, can I, yeah, I can, I can Word of Radiance. Yeah, Word that of Radiance. was a bonus, yeah, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna, that is, succeed on a constitution saving throw, or take 2d6, Radiance. Uh, Word of Radiance is five feet. Cool. Which you have plenty of movement. Uh, what's the, the DC? Movement. That's my spell save DC? Yeah. Is 16. Fail. Let's go. 2d6. Talked. That is 7 total. All right. Nice. Yeah, this, this creature is looking super rough. Play. All right. And that's my turn. Yep. Okay. Uh, the doors are open. Um, so there is slightly less disadvantage now. Um, two of the creatures are going to shoot at Osric. One is going to shoot at Tweedon. And one is going to continue to shoot into this room. So the two against Osric. Uh, Bos does a 17 hit your current armor. All right. Then that probably doesn't either. Uh, and then the one against Quedon. Quedon does a 15 hit. Meets it beats. All right. You take six piercing damage, and then you feel something crawling under your skin, and you take an additional two necrotic damage. Don't like that. And uh, Boz, you see where the arrow hit Quedon. Um, kind of under his robes and up his neck, you see, like, black veins starting to grow. I actually kind of do like that. Um, and then the one at the bottom that's trying to shoot through the window does still have to shoot with disadvantage. But this time it gets it. Uh, you hear a as it fires a bolt that has caught fire into a room full of barrels of ale. I fucking knew that was going to happen. You have a turn to put it out. 
heard, Chef. <laughs> and that will bring us to Zir. Fantastico. Well, probably a bit more of the same, huh? I can't hear you, Boz, if you're talking. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, did I see the fire arrow hit? Uh, you heard it. I didn't, like, I, I'm, I'm standing out there. I didn't you, see But you didn't shoot. see that the arrow was on fire. You would have seen the arrow go through the window, and then you would have heard the sound of it igniting when it hit the barrel. Okay. So, but, so I do know it's a fire arrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yell into there. Fire arrow into the... Fire arrow into the room! Fire arrow! It, or into what what direction is that? Is that are we uh, north to south? Uh yeah, it'd be the southern room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the so south yeah. west room. South southwest corner. Put it out. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll do that. <laughs> Zero will make her way there. Ten. I can walk through Mary. Uh yeah. Friendly and uh, friendly characters don't actually block movement. Fantastic. What do you 10, think? This is Baldur's Gate. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Puts me I here. I don't know how you think that joke has before it gets out of, it goes out of style. Never. I will cunning action dash. Okay. 510. I'm in the room now. Yep. Which you barrel see... is on fire? None of the barrels are on fire. Uh, oh, okay. One of the barrels is leaking ale towards this lantern. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, excuse me, barrel. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> um, let me just, uh... <laughs> yeah, Zir literally just, like, sticks her finger in the hole. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that... Just roll a, roll a deck save and don't roll a one. Okay, well... <laughs> I know you've that. done it before. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that! <laughs> Look, if if I kill the rogue with exploding barrels, I need... it's. <laughs> I rolled a two, not a one! <laughs> Alright. It's, it's out. Twice as good. <laughs> it's out. Excellent. Okay. And then I just go, uh, all good, but, um, I'm you stuck! <laughs> You take one fire damage it's yeah, because that's... you didn't quite, you didn't lick your fingers first. You're just like, ow! Yeah. All right. Good. Missouri. All right. Um, so I'll, first I'll have uh, Mary run. Uh, let me see. Is that within 10 feet? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so Mary's going to take... Uh, let me see what I gotta look at the spotted lion because I don't have Mary any. also remember has a 30 foot blink so she can teleport behind it yeah but then she's outside um you know what I'll probably just have her do that okay that's um, a bonus action for her so she still gets her regular attack get that sweet flank on <laughs> I'll get right here <laughs> and I do have uh, yes and because of her size she can flank it and uh, I do have pack tactics um, advantage on attack rolls against a creature, yeah. at least, uh, so, um, nice. let me see here, I will rend. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see here. Don't suck. Oh, that's not bad. That's a 14 plus 8, so 22. That'll hit. And it'll be 2d8. That's going to be 13 plus 6, so 19 piercing damage. All right, Missouri, why don't you dictate how Mary eviscerates this thing? Um, I was actually using her to set up an attack, kind of to push her more into the way so I could blast, her, blast this thing very easily. And so kind of just pushing and clawing just ends up kind of just ripping up its entire back and you can see the claws almost protruding through the meat on the neck as it just basically bears the back of the skull yeah 
So, so Mary definitely thought this thing would be a lot more durable than it was, but because it is dead flesh, she kind of over just overcommitted and just. Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, Love that. As for me, um... wow, I, I, I can't really do much because I'm too far away. So I'm going to start moving forward um, okay. to kind of get into a position where I can do something. Sounds good. And um, then I, I have to end my turn there. I'll hold in case something comes in but or gets in my line of sight. And my line of sight is... Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see. 120 feet. So if something gets within uh, 120 feet of the door, I can... Um, actually do something okay uh clovis yeah so this this man is gone now it, this man um, is gone indeed this man is gone okay um i think uh uh is guiding bolt still active on that man no no, sorry. Okay. No worries. I just wasn't sure if that was if he had been guiding bolted again. Um, hmm, okay. Everyone's very far away. But they're archers. Uh I think hmm. Yeah, I think uh I'll just I'm going to move my full movement to Six over here should put me in range. Yeah, uh, to Sacred Flame, this man. Uh, so that's a deck save. Okay. DC seventeen. Ah, uh, pass. Okay, no damage then. Uh. As I'm just I'm just charging at him, um, and that's my turn. All right, Bowser. Can't hear you, Buzz. Uh, you're we're muted, not my you, friend. Ah, sorry. Um, I'm just got an implacable man walking there. Stick my sword briefly in the ground and shoot a silver bolt at blue. Okay. Uh, that is an eight. Yeah, that won't do. I am rolling like garbage. <laughs> Let's see what it would have been if I did the macro. Yeah, forget it. Never mind. All right. Uh, do you want to use your second attack to reload? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, let's just rack another bolt into it. And Queden. Uh, I... Well, first of all... Let's take my movement and get as far out as I can. Okay. I can't get to anybody in particular, so I guess I'll just go straight out. I don't know if I'm seeing the squares correctly here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, your your movement will put you. Yeah, there you go. Oh, should we over here actually? Whatever. Okay, um... I was thinking about Bane, but let's just... Let's just try to... Uh-huh. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Sorry, gang.
Well, it worked pretty well once. Well, let's just go ahead and uh, guiding bolt Mr. Uh, Mr. Green over here for my my last second level. Okay. Shoot, that's an 11. That will miss. Yeah. All right. Um, bonus action, I suppose this guy can move 20 feet. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a piss poor turn. <laughs> All right. Um, the lichens with bows um, raise their bows to shoot you, and then they kind of look over your shoulder, lower them, and bolt. Man, they really got the fuck out of there. God damn. That was quick. <laughs> Wait, did, 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 did any of them cross in front of the uh, door? No. Oh, All damn. at once. But what were they running from? I turn around. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't see anything. At least we saved the door. It's seen better days. Yes, but would have been a pain in the ass to remount it. Did it look like they... The, did it... Look like they were just running because they were outnumbered, or it looked like they were running from. They something. didn't look scared. Okay. Hmm. Um. Go back inside. And make sure everyone's okay. Yeah. There were some erroneous uh, arrow shots. Yes. Everyone is underground. Um. The ale is leaking, and the room that Zira's in is sticky on the floor. But other than that, everything's fine. You sticky floor. Considering the flame going into the one room, perhaps some of the rooms should be boarded up completely. Uh, Lady Thane comes out of the um, secret entrance. Yes, that's probably true. We'll, we'll address that. <clears throat> and perhaps, I understand that when it was a tavern, it may have made sense. Perhaps the ale we move to a sort of more centralized section of the building. Or maybe underground. Fortunately, that part of the building is in stasis. If we move it, it will just go. Oh, I see. Can we just get rid of the ale? Can we, like, move the ale out of those containers? Same problem. Oh, that's unfortunate. We don't understand how it works, but it keeps us fed. That is good. The are always full, and there's always fresh water and ale to drink, so... Yes. It's just unfortunate to have a, a big delayed activation bomb attached to the side of the building. It was but what are you going to do? Strange that they attacked with such a small force. Perhaps they were just trying to see, see if, you know, long shot, they could get that to blow up. Perhaps... Know. They've never moved in such small groups before, but that creature is still there. Really? Is it still there, or has it decayed the way that... Uh, uh, it it has decayed. Uh, what is left behind is a vaguely humanoid-looking skeleton that is also gigantically sized, and the skull is fine. Mm. But it kind of just looks like they put a wolf skull on a big dude's body. Gotcha. We should get this door fixed pretty quickly. Is there? Do we have a carpenter? Um, Himalaya walks over, puts her hand on it, and uh, it starts to <laughs> as she casts mending on it. Mm, magic carpentry. Very good. <laughs> um, this barrel next, please. <laughs> <laughs> Zero just, just finger itself. Yeah, I'm like still just like trying to like 
<laughs> Come on, Muppet, we'll fix it. itself. Uh, should I take my finger off? Probably, unless you want to be part of the barrel. Okay! <laughs> she does. <laughs> I wish Zero. I had self-cleaning floors in the temple. Yes, you will Lovely rejoin the group. Well, uh, Amelia starts to look around. Did they take anything? I suppose we should check the other rooms of the building. Just because we were all concentrated in the front doesn't mean they were all concentrated in the front. Maybe we should do a perimeter sweep? Uh, everybody roll investigation. Worth noting, if anything, Boz has not moved from where he was. Okay. Can I substitute my investigation for an insight on Bosric? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a nine for investigation. To Zamir seven. Uh, Zir, um, the uh, the skull that was kind of embedded in the wall that was powering the non-detection bubble. Hmm. Found it. Uh, I got a 23. All right. What's Boss thinking? Or do you want to tell him? And if you don't, roll either persuasion or deception with natural dice. Privately tell me which one it is and then tell me the score. Uh, no, no, there's no really need for deception. He's, he's... He's struggling with his with his anger. He's so gripping his you, sword and he's just When you walk out and you see Bosric, um the previously faded or even white tattoos are now bright red. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think Clovis would observe from behind for a moment before catching Bosric's attention uh, and then would walk up um, and say, Bosric, would you mind plugging your ears for a second? You don't have to, but sure. it's going to be loud. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I'm not going to actually do it because that would be terrible. <laughs> Uh, into the microphone, but uh, Clovis just lets out a really loud scream. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your thing. I just... <sighs> they keep catching us by surprise, and it's... <sighs> well, like everything else that's happened to me since I woke up, it's uh, upsetting. You doing okay? No. No. You want to scream about it? Could always break he actually looks at you. He gives you a big, toothy smile and says... I haven't tried it yet. And he lets out a massive orc roar. Well, a thing did happen before that happened, but I'll I'll oh, allow I'll allow that to play through. After you roar, um you hear a voice. Oh yes, very frightening. You could always try breaking something. And you feel something cold steel press against your your chin mods. And becoming corporeal behind you. You see Natasha. What exactly did you do to my sister that left shattered metal across the floor? She is holding her sickle to your throat. I gave her a gift. She broke it. Where is she now? Ask the thing below. She Let's... tightens it, and it draws a little bit of blood. I'm asking you, where is and my I don't sister? Know. Last and I saw, don't know. 
my lady, she went into the tunnel. We were going to follow, but there was a noise. Um, we decided, perhaps, would not be wise. One, it seems. Looking forward to round three. They faded fast. The point disappears from your throat. I want something right now. You know what I want right now? It's something I know it's impossible because we're dealing with horrors from beyond comprehension. I want to know what they're afraid of. I want to know what hurts them. Well, hopefully, by the time the day is done, the answer to that question will be us. Nothing would make me happier. See you inside. Uh, well, I'm just going to go back inside. And as you make your way inside, you see um, Zier standing in front of the now inactive spell on the tap. That's gone. Oh. How? Didn't even see it happen. How would they have accomplished that? They can turn into clouds. They didn't need much of an entrance. The sisters, I suppose. Yes, that makes sense. How did they even know where it... I guess their magic was stronger than its? Or they saw that suddenly we fell off the radar. Right, but for them to have found it so easily. I mean, once you're in here, it's not exactly inconspicuous. They knew it was something in here, so they flew in as soon as they saw it. They knew. It was theirs to begin with. Well... We know it's valuable to them, and we know we have an extra one. Um, I will check, actually. Do I still have the other one? I thought uh, Clovis had it. Yeah. No, I, I was always carrying Yeah, he, uh, he was... Yeah, as far as you know, you still have it. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> For the moment. But I will um, kind of give a look to... No, no, not going to do anything. Not going to touch anything. Okay. Um, Amelia kind of... Well, not the safe haven that once was, but... You made a deal with us in good faith, and... Well, we're going to get that one back. Your armor will still be prepared for days now. We'll be getting that one back. We might get you some other things from their house. So the decision's been made that we are going back to apparently loot and smash? I should very much like to smash. And loot. And bleed. Them, not me. Alright, I'm glad you clarified that. She was so fa she was so worried about our blood. How fascinated! I'm worried. How fascinating! I'm worried about hers, particularly exactly the pattern it'll make when it splatters on the floor. The sister's scared about Katya. Her death probably made them angry. But if you take them out, you will draw the ire of the pattern. Is that something? Oh, 
Oh, At this point, the whole house is our enemy. The whole house, Seltradot's our enemy. We're, com we're basically committed at this point. I wish we had a choice, but it doesn't seem that we do. If, if she wanted to kill you, she would have. We do have a choice still. What is your suggestion, then, Seer? Well, I don't necessarily have a suggestion. I mean, they came looking for answers, not necessarily to kill. Yes, but this place is no longer as defensible as it was. I understand that we don't have... Uh, we do have a choice on whether or not to go kill them or not, but these people, their survival will be affected by which choice we make. There are weights on both sides of the scale. And doing Absolutely. nothing doing nothing will be a choice as well. Oh, no, I agree. I want to know what your input is. What do you think the right choice is? I just don't think we should necessarily consider the household an enemy yet. I mean, everything's an enemy, right? But... I mean, we're talking about splattering blood on the floor. I don't... I think we should be more thoughtful than revenge. Especially because they haven't... They're being more thoughtful than revenge. So we should be too. We can always go with the intent to inquire and ask. And then respond to whatever's thrown our way. We still need information. Correct. And so do they. So do we offer it? Depends what they need to know and how much they're willing to give for it. Zero looks over to, um, have, has, has everyone come out of the tunnels yet? Yes. Zero looks over to, um, formerly Katya, now Talia? Talia, yes. I mean, there's information. That's what oh. she asked for explicitly, right? What do you think she's going to do with that information? I don't know. Bring well, her back. The thought is that process. something you would be okay with? Probably not. The but only uh, and I'll speak lower. Um, the, the the best takeaway from this is if they did potentially come back for her. At least Siltradot knows the formula or the way or whatever she learned so that Katya would not become what she was before. Potentially she could end up like one of the perfect sisters. So worst case scenario, we would not be leaving her in the same condition. But we have we to walk in her mother we have in the to same condition. No, but we have to assume that if, if that's information we're willing to trade, we have to accept the consequence that they will come for her and perform more tests, more experiments. Try to recreate their sister, hopefully better than the last time. I think the question is, are the sisters acting something that mother requested, or, or are they asking because they want to know? They didn't really seem to care for Katya, so why do they need to know where she is? Making a lot of assumptions. We didn't actually see them interact with her. No, but we heard how they talked about her, and they didn't speak of her highly. They still brought her a toy. A gift. We got a very that was, small that slice. was Madam that was Madame Seltradot's planning. True. Not not theirs. True. But they gave her a toy. Because mother said so. So what's their Mother's... say? Are they just doing what mom says or do they have their own motives too? That's what I'm saying. We can ask all the questions we want here back and forth, but there's only three people that could give us the answers.
Correct. So the question is, do we go and ask the questions or do we find a different path? Well, I think that goes back to your question that you posed of, are we willing to give information and trade? For one, I'm absolutely not willing to give them that information. We've just returned this girl to her mother. We're going to take her from her mother again? Sure, be maybe responsible, she... but we wouldn't be the ones taking her. It really does fall on... Does that, that... make a difference? It would just be another action we could regret later. The reality is this was this whole actions that have taken place that have led us to here where several of you made decisions to help this girl. The question that you need to ask yourself is is this where we let it end? I will not make a choice that's going to undo something you did unless you're comfortable with undoing what you did. And I don't speak for everyone, but I'm I'm putting my I'm drawing my line in the sand here that I am not. If you all outvote me, fine, but I I will not and would not ever agree to doing that. That's the answer I needed. I would agree. All I need is one more person to say no. Wait, I didn't say no. Just no. Oh, no, that's, I thought, uh, the two people I heard definitively say no were uh, Clovis and Quedon. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for a third. Well, here's my thoughts on all this. Outside of just the effect of the sister question, Seltradot and her daughters, they look at this village and these people as beneath them as toys or fodder this has likely been going on for longer than we know and quite frankly I am god's damn tired of things pushing me around and I'm tired of them pushing people around. Now, I know I just got here. We all just got here. And there's an argument to be had for what right do we have to fix anything. Well, to whatever brought us here, I would say this. If they wanted the China to stay nice, neat, and stacked, it was a bad idea to drag bulls into the shop. So I, frankly, am absolutely fine with going to war. I literally just stood outside and had Nastasia put a, her hook to my neck. As if she had every right to do it. As if I was livestock. Or a misbehaving dog. I understand. And that's what I need to know about my enemy, how they feel about me, and how I feel about them. So we're not going the information route? Um, I was going the information route to begin with as the, uh, the deal. Uh, my question was more, I was looking for a third person to say whether we would trade a specific piece of information or not. Oh, if you need that, know that I'm saying no. Okay, well then, that's the information we don't give. Um, I'm still willing to go the information route if there's something else that we can think of. I what else might they want? Yeah, there's cool. Hmm. 
the dagger I took. Dirt on the other dukes. So we have two out of three of those. Are we willing to give up one of the other two? The dagger or the skull? I'm quite fond of the dagger. Are we willing to give up the skull? Well, now we know that even if we leave it here, they'll just come back and get it. And there's not really anything we can do to stop them from doing that. Honestly, I think that if we walk in the front door and say we'd be willing to trade the skull for information, they're going to attack us because essentially we're trying to trade something of theirs for something of theirs. But I'm willing to... I'm willing to take the gamble, if that's mm -hmm. what you prefer. If they make it violent or they act out, then we can respond in kind. But we could potentially trade the skull back. We could. There is also the possibility with the information route that the moment they get whatever they need from us, they'll just try and kill us anyway. I have no reason to believe that they're going to hold up their end of the bargain. They haven't exactly proven themselves. We haven't exactly regard. given them an, uh, the option to. Fair Every enough. Every time that we've done something, it's been in opposition. It hasn't been with collaboration in mind. Well, I would say that uh, Madame Selterdot didn't exactly give us a fair shot at getting Dimitri back, even though she claimed that we were welcome to do so. There's no way we could have possibly gotten him back without breaking the rules. And I think she knew that when she told them to us. The test could very well have been to see how long we would be able to fall within the rules before we had to break them. Perhaps. But if she was interested in business, she could have offered a trade right then and there. They're not interested in business. They're interested in games. And we're toys. Then why exactly are we going with them to conduct a business deal? A trade of information? Because it's Which brings me back to suggesting that we go seek out Gregor. I see no reason why we shouldn't. Uh, yeah. I'm not against me at least meeting the man. Yeah. I don't like leaving them, especially after this, but I don't know that there's anything we can really do. There's no further path that is going to make absolutely everybody happy. But, you know. It's a matter of... Look, we could set off with the best intentions and see where it goes. If we want to see Gregor, we could go see Gregor. Um, I don't know what he respects. If it's strength or what, going to him. If he respected strength and us going to him to ask for assistance, it could diminish us in his eyes and he may no longer be willing to put the faith in us that he seems to have since his conversation with the matron. That's... But it is it is a better plan than walking into Seldrada's manor and... Picking a fight, yeah. I suppose. Which, I, like, and... You also suggested taking on Elizabeth. We are not ready for that. Well, we've already said we're not ready for any of them, so... Mez thought it might be smart to take her on first, since she seems to be the most powerful. Not since she seems to be the most powerful. To... It's because she she seems to know the least about us right now. She has questions, and if she doesn't know what we're capable of, attacking her now while we have a secret or two up our sleeve is better than her getting a full understanding of everything we can do. and then Which is, then, again, making a lot of assumptions. We have nothing... We have nothing that allows us to do anything but make assumptions. We need a piece of information in order to start making informed guesses. Until then, all we can say is, based on what I think, here's another thing I think. We have one more skull. One more of the Orm skulls. I will actually pat to make sure I've got it. My my pack. You're muted, uh, Dreadlord, but, um... Dreadmaster, Sorry. but... You have it. Okay. We have, perhaps, something 
that Gregor is interested in. Okay. It's possible we arrange a trade for information leading to the downfall that could help us in our in our endeavor to take down the Seljordots. After all, when they're gone, in theory, the castle is open. The castle has a lot of aurum. If Gregor is interested in such things, that's a resource he'd be looking to plunder. One we'd be well, giving to him. Well, we have, at the moment, shall we say, a sample. Also Which keep in could... mind, the second we take out one of them, the other three, potentially two with Gregor as a dark horse ally, will know that we are a threat. That's true, but also inevitable. All of the resources we may potentially gain from taking one out will also then become in competition with all of the other dreadlords. We, we potentially will give you know, an offering of the Aurum and their location to Gregor. If Gregor turns out to not be an ally down the line, that's quite a bit of valuable material we've lined his pocket with for him to then fight us with. That is the risk. Mm -hmm. Well, as you say inevitable, but once again, we don't have to kill any of them. That's not what the ask was. The biggest question I think we have is what's required to ease the restrictions on the matron. We really can't do the more. orbs. Yeah, so we need to know where they are, how to move them, destroy them, whatever it happens to be. And I'm fairly certain that none of the four are going to willingly allow that. If that Unless... was the case, then why isn't Gregor offering to relinquish part of his control? Mm -hmm. Unless you can steal them here, which may be an option. I don't know that we have any other way of getting them, because as Mez just said, I doubt that they're going to trade them. So I'm willing to give that a shot, but we do need to come to a group understanding and consensus that you know, if we're going to do this mission that was given to us, that may be what it comes to. No, of course. We may have no other way to get them. I just don't want us to default there. I understand. It, it, I mean, I know we're all aware of it, but I'll say it out loud. In a one-to-one -one battle with any of these people, we lose. We die. Mm -hmm. We have to be smarter than just, let's go fight them. And unfortunately, I know you guys are saying, well, what's your suggestion? And I feel bad that I don't really have one, but I just want to keep bringing that up. That um, as the person who has died of us, easily in this fucked up place um it'll happen again and again well, if we don't do something other than just let's go take them on and see what happens well i didn't recommend that i recommended we go there and try to barter information or trade and see what happens because the reality is we're not going to get in we're not going to be able to sneak around um maybe you and i could um, to a degree, but that's assuming they wouldn't know the second we step foot in their homes. And that also leaves two to three that would be completely outside, unable to assist us. So it's we have to barter and speak with them. Anything else is going to lead directly to conflict. So what do we do? I think we have to put together what information we're willing to trade, if any, including information about us. It sounds like whatever our plan is, the first move has, at this point, has to be to go to Greg. Because we need information that we don't have. Um, the only piece that we do have that could potentially be of interest to them, and we don't know in its current state that they would be interested in that information, or that they would spare us for it, let alone give us what we want, we can't agree on giving to them. So it seems like we just need to try and find something new. Whether it's Gregor or someone else, we're still going to be entering into a negotiation. Yes. And if we don't find anything out from Gregor, or on our journey to Gregor, or on our journey back from Gregor, we can try our luck with the skull. 
I suppose. They already have the one. I don't imagine giving them another one is going to be particularly... Well, once we leave here, they'll know it's no longer here, correct? But they didn't seem mean? to take it. It's not... It's not forming the spell, so they might not realize the skull in and of itself is gone. It's when this whole tavern disappeared that it seems that they took notice. Then we need to leave. Let's set off for Gregor. Well, in two days. And yeah, and once our once the armor is ready, we'll set off for Gregor and see where that takes us. Amelia, do you have any thoughts? You've been she kind of like this. she was trying to like give you your space, but she walked up. I think everything you've said makes sense. Though you will not walk out of here with information. I'll tell you. I won't let you hand her back. That. So Understood. That is a bargaining chip you're planning to do. She just like she kind of just taps the rifle. You've been kind to us, and I think we've been kind to you as well, but that's... We don't trade in children's lives. Oh, trust us. We went through a uh, hell in a handbasket to get her in some semblance to where she is now. That being said, Zeltradot is a fantastic scientist, as you have found. Primarily a physician. She studied the biological sciences for many years, but young though he may appear, Selbradot's knowledge does not hold a candle to the genius that is Dr. Fulcher. If you want information, he's the one to talk to. And he hates the other goofs nearly as much as the Matron does, so he's more likely to help. I'm sure that he wants power here. I'm sure he wants to be the sole bread master, and perhaps he's willing to share power with the matron or let her go in exchange for domination of this place. But one way or another, I think he's your best bet for now. You set foot into Selpriot Manor again, it's likely your group or hers will have to stay before to exit. And you are wise not to step into Nullus here as a state. You are strong of arm. All of you. All of you are fractured of soul and mind. He said that to keep you alive. Until you can Until you can manage your own home, see to your own interpersonal affairs, shield your mind. You have no defense against Lisa. Then. That was my fear. <laughs> and even when you do, she will be a challenge. Perhaps not as devious as Fulger or as strong as Gretos. They are all, as you have correctly surmised, powerful folks. I, as you know, am a cleric of some skill. Does it not vex you that I have not risen against them? And then she pulls her ruff to the side, and you see, like, what looks like a chunk that has been, like, missing from her neck has scarred over. I did, many years ago. Whatever battle you choose, know that it will not be easily fought. And do not rely on the capricious nature of this place in its relationship to death. You're just well, as likely to stay with the creature below the earth as it is for it to send you back. What would you have done differently? I think you have stepped as carefully on eggshells as you possibly could. But I think you are dealing with creatures that you are assuming act on the same metric as the rest of you. These are not 
individuals that seek power in the way that a despot or a king or even a lich would. These are otherworldly creatures that view mortality as cattle. They do not treat you the way they do because they think they are stronger than you or because they don't perceive you as a threat. They treat you that way because they don't even perceive you as the same. I don't know the, the proper word for it, but it, they view you the way you would view an insect. You're just, you're not worthy of notice. Edible experimentation on animals, things like that, things you slaughter for meat. That is, that is how we are viewed here. And yes, dogs can bite, snakes can envenom, wolves can tear warriors apart. But they're still animals. And if you want to prove to them that you're more than that, don't act like brutes. Go to Gregor first. Well, maybe we want them to continue viewing us as insects. Agree, it, is the but... it is the unobserved scorpion that stings the hardest. You are wise beyond your years. She kind of gives you a wink and says, Death. Thanks. My only advice is stop assuming they think the same. You measure your plans in days and weeks, they measure their plans in centuries. Is there anything else? I think, I think we just need our armor. A, good a talk as we're gonna get. Yeah. No, that was a helpful perspective. Yes. You've been more help than we expected to get, I think. And thank you for all of that. Invested in your success? Want to see my investment bear fruit? I would like to see Rovania again before I have my true death. You and me both. All right, well, what are we going to do for two days? Aren't you doing training? Yeah, but like, what are we going to do? Um, if we, yeah, if we can find a spear, Boz can start training, um, can start training Clovis. Uh, yeah, there's spears that you can use. They're not, you know, they're not in good quality. Um, but there's spears that you guys can use. Um, the uh, the sort of orcish looking reborn uh, approaches. Might I, um, Captain? Might I join the training? I of course. Try not to die again. Whatever hangups we, we have about each other, we better get over them real damn quick. You always say we. You always talk about the group as if it's another. No, it's never I, you. No, I said we. I'm part that's of what it. I was. Yeah, that's that's pretty obviously all of us. There are times when I say you guys, and that's because I'm looking for input from you guys. But as a group, as a whole, as a unit, yeah, I'm part of that. And I'm fairly yeah. certain that more than one of us has a hang-up about another. We're going to need to move past that because we're going to have to weirdly trust each other implicitly that regardless of what happens, one or another one of us is going to be there. Hmm. 
good luck with that. Oh, I didn't say it was going to be easy. I don't expect it to be. Now that oh. we have moved to... No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was literally... I was about to say, and on that note, training. Yeah, I was about to say, now that we have moved to the At Dawn We Plan stage, I think this is actually a good place to wrap up our session for this week. 